Okay, it is an educational show about smartphones and tablets with the Geeks on Tour. That's us. I'm Jim. And I'm Chris. And we are the Geeks Who Teach. And so, we would like you to become a member if you at all would like to. If you're not already a member, you should do that because that's what we do here. All right, I see some comments. Uh, Richard Rendell says he's not seeing video. Okay. And, yeah, we just had a title slide up there, but I'm still seeing the first title slide myself, so we'll look at that. Fred Sowerby checked in. Hello, Fred. Okay, cool, cool. Well, I'm Jim, and together with my wife, Chris, here, we're the Geeks on Tour. Do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? Do you have questions about your Android or your iPad tablet? And how do you learn about these amazing devices? It, we are geeks who teach. And we are into lifelong learning and helping others learn technology along with us. Our website is geeksontour.com, and that's where you'll find several hundred videos on all the topics we teach. OK. Well, right now we're in Casa Grande, Arizona, and at a big RV park called Palm Creek. We're presenting two seminars each week here for the month of December. And if you're in the area, anywhere around, we had some folks come down for a se uh, from Phoenix yesterday for a seminar. And we're into lifelong You need to turn that off. Helping others learn technology. <laughs> Our internet us. connections are, are all over the place here today. And what we have is a iPad running as the hotspot. Hot spot. We have Chris's phone running as a hotspot. Hot spot. We have a Dish Network cable, cable. modem <laughs> running as a hotspot. And so we have all kinds of connections, and some of them might even work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can only hope. Bandwidth is such a big issue when it comes to these shows, and, and we're hoping that everybody can see us and everything's working there. It is the lifeblood oh, of the show. so much. So what's our topic today, Chris? Well, our beginner's topic is how to put photos onto your contacts. Okay, so we'll do that intro and uh, the quick tips. The beginner's lesson will be all about that. And our app, or the feature app of the week, I'm going to start on Evernote. And we'll see how far we can get with it. But we'll just show a, a small piece of Evernote because it's such a huge pick, uh, program app. It can, you can keep track of your entire life. Okay. using Evernote. So, so if you have any questions there, please leave them in the comments below, either on the YouTube page or on the Google Plus page, wherever you have to be watching, and we'll try to get those in during the show. This show is recorded on the YouTube for viewing later with the rest of the reruns. So we have all of them up there, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. OK? So cool. OK. I'm. Just in case you're having the same experience that I'm seeing, <laughs> it looks like that on the Google Plus screen, it's not. Uh, so David Cross says he's here. So David, let us know if you're seeing what you're supposed to be seeing. <laughs> but in any case, if not, you might try going to the YouTube version instead. This is actually broadcast live under two different places. So. Right now, I should, we should be seeing the screen of Chris and I, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get into it. So, all right, yes, do that. Okay. So we do have a couple of little quick tips before we start a beginner's lesson. We like to talk about a couple of quick tips. And the first one is about panorama photos. So I want to get my phone, which is right here, <laughs> <laughs> and switch. 
so that you're seeing my phone? Hmm. I don't see any. Oh, no. Okay, just change the camera then. You have the front camera. There we go. Now okay. we see it. Okay. So what am I talking about? Panorama. I can never figure out what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> panorama on most every phone has a panorama mode in the camera now. In mine, the Samsung Galaxy S5, it happens to be under this mode and panorama. Now, a panorama is usually something very wide, right? You're up in the mountains and you want to see everything from north to south. And you tend to hold the camera horizontal. <clears throat> Our tip is don't do that. <laughs> Bring it up. If you are yeah, that's a little bit better. taking a panorama, it's already going to be wide. So hold the phone vertically. And let me just show you a sample. So I went outside this morning and, and did that. So here is a panorama that I took. And then I took it again. And I want you to see what do you think? Which one is the one that was taken, in my opinion, the correct way, holding the phone vertical? It's this first one because it's, it's taller. Say, if it's already going to be wide, you don't want it to be even wider. So that's the first tip. When taking a panorama, hold your phone vertically. All right, what was the second tip? The second tip, <laughs> <laughs> the second tip has to do with the home button. And I'm pretty sure we covered this in the uh, very first episode, but it bears repeating. On my phone, the home button is this physical button. It's a Samsung, so it has this button here. Pressing it once takes you to the home. But I just the tip today is if you hold it down, something else happens. So if I hold it down, it brings up a Google Voice search. Just like, I mean, very similar to on an iPad or iPhone, the home button is the round, the round, somewhat identical button. Press it once, it takes you to your home screen. But if you hold it down, you get Siri. What's the weather going to be like today, Siri? The weather is looking good today, up to 59 degrees Fahrenheit and sunny. Brr, that's <laughs> not warm enough. Next year we're going to Florida. <laughs> Up to 50, huh? And Google would have done that same thing. I just didn't ask it a question. Okay, those are my two tips. Really? Is that all? That's it, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> what are we going to do now? <laughs> okay. I'm still looking for my... All right, well, I think I'm ready for the uh, beginner's lesson now. Okay, let's go right into it then. And just because it's our habit, we always start with the iPad. And the lesson is how to get pictures onto contacts. Now, first, why do you want to get pictures onto contacts? It's really nice when somebody calls you to see their face. You know, you can just so easily understand and see who's calling. This is an iPad, though. This isn't an iPhone. Tablets, like iPads, can't get phone, regular phone calls. So I can't show you that, but I will still show you how to add a picture to contact. So I'm talking about your contacts, which is that button right there. And I'm going to find a contact that I have in here that I know doesn't have a picture. It's actually just a made-up person <laughs> called Joe Kent. So there is the contact record for Joe Kent. Notice there's just no picture at all. But I tap Edit. So the first key is to get the person up in their, their whole record. 
then you tap edit and now you see a place that says add photo so you tap there now you can either take a photo or you can choose a photo that's in your gallery I'm going to choose take a photo and we're going to pretend that Jim is Joe Kent so let's see if I can make this follow around here <laughs> and if you can bend down a little bit maybe Jim there, <laughs> there we go so I just take a picture look up just just look up a little bit okay and I take a picture by tapping on the shutter button <laughs> good picture of the mustache oh there we go that didn't come out too bad all right now I'll put this back down again so there's the picture I just took now that's in this kind of edit <laughs> mode <laughs> what a great picture <laughs> there we go and if I tap use photo I can't get it all the way down there all right well obviously this wasn't the ideal con all right well it's just a mustache well in fact how about let's just make it bigger now that's how you can tell me <laughs> yeah yeah so so this is the point where you can it says move and scale so you can make it smaller you can make it zoom in to a certain part <laughs> when you have what you like and close that off you tap on use photo okay and now that picture is on Joe Kent's record let's do one more I have this person called Susie Q and so what's the next step tap on edit that opens up a spot where you can add photo and this time you know Susie's not around <laughs> so <laughs> I have to go find a photo to take to add in there I said add photo so now I have all the photos that are on this gallery in the my in the photos and I found something that I thought was somebody who looks like a Susie Q <laughs> back back a ways let's see so I'm just going th this is just allowing me to go through my gallery here Chris has a few pictures in her gallery I don't know why actually not that many on here but there's one and and then you know I don't want the other guy in there so I expand it until it's just Susie's face and Oh, what did I do? You broke I, it. I tapped somewhere else. <laughs> okay. That never happens to you, does it? No, it never happens to me. <laughs> That's for sure. So I got to start over. Add photo, choose photo. It'd be nice if it took me back to right where I was, but it doesn't. Tag it, tag it, tag it, tag it. Yeah. yeah. This is how most people show pictures of their grandkids when you say, you know, you don't bring out a wallet anymore. You bring out a, a smartphone or a tablet or something like that, and that's what you show. There she there is. There we go. And then choose. So now there's her face. But now Jim looks at this and says, that's not Susie. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the right picture. Okay, so now I want to show them up here. Oh, so okay. change to the camera what I'm gonna do I say well I don't have a picture of Susie on this tablet then on my iPad so what am I gonna do I'm going to go to my computer and I say I know I have a picture of Susie on my computer in fact I can even search for her Yeah, she was one of these people that was on the dive trip with us. Oh, that's right. <laughs> well, well, I wish I was there right now. Look how warm. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is take a photo. Susie's not in front of me, but I have her picture on here. I'm going to magnify this a little bit. Move Who's that good-looking guy? 
<laughs> Over there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not him. But there's. <laughs> Take a photo and point it at the screen. Oh, wow. That's cool. Look and at that. Take a photo. Now, I don't want him in there. This is Susie. So I increase it. Use photo. And now that's on her record. So that's my little tip. And it doesn't even have to be on the computer. You could have a yearbook or an old photo album. Take a picture of a picture is, is my special tip there. So that's it for the Apple devices, for the iPad. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the Android. Okay. Ready to go? Yep. They're okay. Right there. It's on there. Okay. So contacts. Now there is a contacts app, but you can also get there through phone. Oh, now this one is a phone. Will you call me? So yeah, sure. here I want to show you what the real value is of having a picture on somebody's contact. When they call you, which Jim is about to do, you will see their face before you need to answer the call. So that that's pretty cool. I mean, yes, it shows their name. Oh boy, your husband is calling. Oh boy, your husband is calling. Oh boy, your husband is calling. Oh boy. Your oh, I'm just going to hang up on your this husband. guy. Now, if you wonder how I got that oh boy, your husband is calling ringtone, that's next week's lesson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you saw his face, right? Okay. So I say, well, that is really nice, but you know what? I think he looks really good today. So I'm going to change the face on his contact and take a picture of him today. So I'll go into phone and then contacts. And as I say, you can go straight to contacts if you want, but you can also do it this way. And let me find him. I have it. Uh, ah, nope. <laughs> There's Devin. There we go. <laughs> okay. So step one, bring the contact up on your screen. Step two, same as the last lesson, it's edit. But I don't see anything on this screen that says edit. Well, there's that little pencil. So the pencil is how you edit. Then you tap on the existing picture. And this time I say I'm going to take a picture. Take picture. All right. So can you bend down a little no, bit? I, just, I have it on us. So you can just take the picture with that. Oh, okay. Don't worry about that. You mean they'll they'll believe they'll understand that I really did take a picture. Huh? I hope okay. So. <laughs> All right. So I just took that picture, and I can say okay. And you still get a chance to crop it, but Android gives you choices. It's too many choices. I'm just going to say I'll use the gallery to crop the picture, and it gives me this square. I can adjust it, move it around, but you want to get pretty close. The idea is to really have their face and then done. So now that face is his icon. I tap save and hit it changed. Okay. The secondly is how to add a picture from the device. For this one, I found somebody that I want to show you. Don and Kim Green. They don't have any picture at all. I tap on that. Oops. I meant to. Uh, I can search. I have another one of them that didn't have their phone number in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the one that is Don and Persan Kim Green. Okay, so what's the next step? Edit the pencil and plus. Now for them, I do have a picture in my library. So I said get picture. I tap on my camera library. I scroll down here a ways. It's a few weeks ago that we went and visited them. These are our friends who own Harvest 
host, which is a cool way to park in wineries and farms. All right, it was after that. I missed it. And I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting there. Yeah, Christmas is coming too. <laughs> there we go. There they are. <laughs> okay. So here I have two people. And what Android wants me to do, can you see that it actually has put a little blue square around their faces? Android wants me to just pick one. And that's okay. I can pick one. But then I can expand the square so it gets both of them. Okay. Then I tap Done. And now I tap Save. Wow, that's cool. So there is Don and both of them. Isn't that a nice picture? That is a nice picture. Yeah. Okay. I would like to say that I took it, but I was in that picture. So <laughs> I really can't. <laughs> Looks like it must have been me, huh? or else it was a selfie. Okay. And one more. I have to go back. I just tap my back button to go back to all my contacts. And I want to find Bill. I'm going to search for Bill. And I'm talking about Bill Osborne. He has, that's, this one has no picture. And I want a picture. But once again, I don't have a picture of him on my phone. And he's not in front of me, so I can't take a picture. So what am I going to do? Eh, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to press Edit and tap on the picture. And I'm going to take a picture from the computer again. Or, yeah, let's, let's take a picture from the computer. And you can even go to People, so back to View All. And there's there's Bill Osborne in my face recognition part of part of Picasa, and that one right there. So I just take his picture. Yay! Such a friendly face. A very handsome man. <laughs> and now I'm back to here. Tap OK. I want to crop it to just as close in as, as is reasonable, and done. That's safe. Okay. Now there's a couple, there are still a couple other things I want to show you, and that is, what if I go back to finding Jim and I decide, you know, I like that picture he had before. How am I going to do that? If I edit and remove this picture, and save, how did that happen? How did he get that picture? Anybody know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's, Does anyone know? That's because that is your Google profile picture. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. The con contact photo, your Google profile picture will show up if you have one. So that's how, I mean, there are people here that, Julie Manhold, I did not put that picture in for her. No. No, so but she does have a Google Plus. She has a Google profile. So profile when I put in her, if she has a Gmail, it's there. Okay, cool. and the last thing I will just tell you about: yeah, if sure. you want to do a lot of work on your contacts and it's cumbersome uh, on the phone or on your tablet, you can do all this on the computer. If you are in the Apple world, just make sure that iCloud is synchronizing your contacts. Mm -hmm. Then you can do the work on iCloud.com. Or in Google, you can do the work in, in Gmail contacts. 
Well, cool. All right. Well, I found a cartoon today that I really thought was fun. You know, for people who like to talk to themselves, there's these earbuds here with one wire that goes from one ear to the other, but there's a microphone in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I saw that and I didn't get it. <laughs> Does that mean I need one? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Does that mean I could talk and you wouldn't have to listen to me? Is that the... <laughs> uh, I don't think that would happen. Well, we have a couple of people here. Let's see what, what they said here. So we're looking to see if there's some questions. Yeah, Mickey says that Tucson was 33 this morning. <laughs> Unusual, but it gets even colder some nights in the winter. How does Tucson is south of us? Yeah. And we weren't that cold, huh? Yeah, Joe and Sylvia seem to be having a problem. That's a nice picture of them. They're watching, and they'll, they say that they're hearing an echo, or Ooh. my hotspot's not turned on over and over. Mm. Don't oh, know what dear. that's about. Okay. But nobody else has said anything. And look at this. Bob says it's 43 in Boston today. And okay. now that's not bad at all. Yeah. It's warmer there than it was here. <laughs> or at least in Tucson. Here's a question. Is there a way to stop video ads from starting on web pages? That's a real problem, isn't it? Because especially if you have a, a limited cellular metered connection to the internet, you, you go to a website and these videos start playing and I don't I'm not sure. Well, I found out the answer to that once, and I was going to make it a tip, but then I went to do it, and it didn't work. And it didn't work. Right. Yeah, there's, it's a brow or what? What I learned was that it's a browser setting. Okay. So you could go into the settings of your Chrome or your Internet Explorer, and on the, which tab was it? Something to do with about your view your view and what was being produced on the screen, you could turn off the automatic playing of videos. Okay. I couldn't get it to work, but we'll try again. <laughs> yeah, and, and we'll probably try and answer you on the comments here. And, or maybe we'll bring it up next week and see how that goes. Okay. okay. I have a, do you want to do my app of the week? Uh, sure. There was one more question that came up beforehand. Oh, yeah? And that was, how do you turn off notifications? Somebody's playing, what did you say? Scrabble, I think she said. Playing the Scrabble game, and it just keeps notifying and notifying her every time somebody wants to play <laughs> and driving her nuts. Oh, man. And she's on an iPhone. So that was last week's lesson, actually. <laughs> we taught about notifications last week, but I'd be happy to show just that one answer. Okay. Let me go over there. Yeah. Got it. And I can't, I can't tell what I'm seeing. There are they? No, wrong. Oh, wrong it's not even on. <laughs> you had it, but yeah. Change cameras. There you go. That looks good. Okay. So what we're talking about is notifications, and that's in your settings. So settings. Come up just a little. Yeah. And notifications. And then you see all of these over here. So I don't have any games, but let's say that Vine. Let's say that Vine was a game and was giving me all these notifications. You just tap on it, and where it says allow notifications, turn that off. No more notifications for that app. Oh, okay. Well, that's handy. Okay, let's see. We're, uh, oh, I want to do Evernote. I just want to say a couple of things about Evernote before we before we get too far in here. And so I want to use my phone on this one because I have Evernote and I know right where it is. But we'll have Chris show it. So Evernote is this little elephant down there. You see him? Okay. 
And one of the best things I like about Evernote is that you can take a picture of a business card and it will store that business card for you so you don't have a bunch of business cards all around. Plus, it will actually index and save and be able to recognize words that are on that picture. So the way you do it is you go to the camera. So here he just handed me a card of our friend Phil May from Techno RV. Right. Okay. And you want me to I can it? just I think it'd probably be best just put it on the table. Does okay. it is we seeing it? Yeah, yeah, you can see that. That's seeing fine. It. A little wire there. Yeah. <laughs> And what you do in Evernote is you have to say, I want to add a new note. So the plus there. And you push on the plus. And then you get the card. You'll say camera, then this is the next one. And then you move the lens, the camera lens, so that you're seeing. Now what I found is that you don't want to get too close, otherwise it doesn't focus properly. But once it's there and focused, you can push the camera button. It'll snap. You might have heard that. Now, you can, if it's OK, you can check it up at the top to make sure that it looks good. OK. It looks pretty good. OK. And then go ahead and hit the check mark so that saves it. If it wasn't good, you could hit the trash can and take it over again. I did now, have some you, glare up there. Yeah, I might have wanted to take it over. That's okay. For now, uh, now if you pull down on the whole thing, you can get the title there, and you can change the title. So on this one, I might put a title of Techno RV. Oops. <laughs> she does this to me all the time. She makes me write something big. I could have told her just to write Phil. <laughs> and then done. Okay. So it saves it in there. Now, when it saves it in there, it also synchronizes it up to a cloud, the Evernote.com. So you can see that on any device as long as you have an account with Evernote. You have a username and password. So I could look at that on my computer. I could look at that on my tablet or my iPad. And I could see it on my phone. But let's say I wanted to go and I'm you know, down the road somewhere and I, I need to find Techno RV. Or I just can't even remember his company, but I know his name is Phil. So <laughs> I can go in and try a search. Now yeah, let's see. If all right. Just wanted to get it so it was off the screen. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> fine. Yeah, the search is the magnifying glass up at the top, as usual. All right. So I have some searches there, and you just type in type fill, see if it comes up. And search. Well, now, it does take a little bit of time, and that is determined by your internet connection and how long it takes. There's a free and a pay-for version. Um, so how about let's search for somebody who's been in there a little. It, it takes a while for it to generate the knowledge of the picture as the, the text in the pictures. OK. So what do we want to try for? Well, you showed it. All right. I think I may have taken him out, but try Dick, oh. just Dick. Mm. So, yeah, anything that has to do with there. There's three notes found, the editing workshop. Well, let's okay. see where it found Dick in this one. This was just a picture, right? No, that was somebody else. That was something. Oh, okay. But believe me, it does work. <laughs> it does a search. And you know, it usually only takes a couple of minutes to go in there. But, but Evernote is available for the Android, for the iOS, and for the Windows Phone. It's also available for the PC 
and the Max. So whatever device you're on, it'll probably work. And you know, there's there's so 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 much more. I mean, if you really were taking pictures of business cards, you would tag them with the category of business card or put them in right. a notebook. I have a, I have a business card notebook just for the business cards. But Evernote is a suite of software and services designed for note taking and archiving. And the note can be any piece of formatted text. You can even do a, a, a capture on a web page if you have the plugin. They, they have the plugin for Safari for the Mac and for Firefox and Chrome and What's the other one? Internet Explorer, <laughs> Internet Explorer, and the notes can have file attachments, and they can be arranged into folders, tagged, annotated, edited, given comments, searched, and exported. So it really is a full-featured note-taking program app for your devices, and it'll work on all of the devices. And I think it was episode either two or four of this what does this button do where we talked about other note-taking apps as well as Evernote. Okay. Now, Bill Hardbeck has a question here. Would Google Goggles be covered in the future, particularly the OCR part? Yeah. <laughs> we also did Google Goggles two episodes ago. Two episodes ago, but we'll get into it a little bit more. But when we did the the scanning, the, yeah, barcode the QR scanning, code the QR, scanning. Yeah, we, we did a, a bit of that. So check out the... Google Goggles is way cool. It is. <laughs> it is a way cool... You might be able to do it all. <laughs> and yeah, it is something that you want to take a look at. It'll also do that recognition off of a, off of a business card. Mm-hmm. Amazing program. That's Google. Yeah, we did show that. Yeah. In our episode two weeks ago. Okay. Now, so that was Google Goggles. We did Evernote, and we're going to do more on Evernote. We've even talked about doing a whole uh, series <sighs> on Evernote, and you know, because it is so full featured, we would we would really like to. But check you know, that the problem. <laughs> I want to take that class. <laughs> <laughs> so we. You know, we, we always say that the best way to teach this stuff, or to learn this stuff, is to teach it first. And so we'll be we'll be doing that. I'll make her make her do all of that. That's the important thing. Okay, uh, we're about at the end of the show. Uh, we do want you to like us on Facebook if you can. That's one of the really cool things. We want you to become a member. And we want you to do all of the things that we tell you to do. How's that going? <laughs> <laughs> but did you learn something? I know I did. Oh, and David says he says good show today. I learned something, several new things so far. Yay! That's uh, the idea. So did we. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are the first two steps to get a picture attached to a contact? All right, nothing real special. I'm not trying to be tricky in this question. It's just, number one, you have to open up that contact so that it's full screen. Number two, you find an edit. It might actually say E-D-I-T, or it might be a little pencil or some other icon that represents edit. Okay. To get a photo, you can take a picture of a person in front of you. You can select a picture from your gallery, or what's Chris's special? Take a picture of a picture. It can be from a yearbook, a, a photo album, or it could even just be from your computer. In fact, it occurred to me to put Robert Redford in my contact list, <laughs> and I could just I could just search for an image of Robert Redford and put him in my phone book. <laughs> uh, right. All right. So, what if the only photo you have of the person also has two other people in the picture? And that's no problem. You get to edit. You get to crop and move the picture around after you've selected it. And can you delete a picture that's already attached to a contact? Absolutely. If you delete a picture and there is no other picture available, it'll just go to a little icon of a face. But if they have a profile picture, Google or Facebook, then that will show up. Okay. 
So, what's the web page that lists all of our weekly shows? Geeksontour.com, and then there's a menu item called Weekly Show. And that is... We covered that in this episode. Just go to this page, and you'll see a listing of all the episodes with a little description. Okay, great. So what's the web page that lists all of our recent newsletters? Yes, we hope you get our newsletters emailed to you monthly. You can just subscribe. You can see all the past ones by going to geeksontour.com. The menu is called Blogs and Articles. The first item under it is newsletters. Great. So what are the benefits that you get by joining Geeks on Tour? Well, the first one, of course, is access to all of our tutorial videos. The second one is being able to ask us questions in the Q&A forum. And last but not least is all of these free What Does This Button Do shows have show notes. Oh, with direct links to the part of the show right. where it's discussed. So you don't have to watch the whole show. You can click and go straight to what you want to see. And we have nearly 300 tutorial videos up there on all the subjects that we teach. And uh, we promise to respond to the questions that you ask. We don't promise to answer those questions. We try very hard. We do. But <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but we don't always know the answer. OK. So become a member. Go to geeksontour.com and sign up. The Geeks on Tour, where technology training and where the geeks who teach. So next time, Sunday, will be next Sunday, the 21st. Right before Christmas, beginner's lessons. Chris is going to do sounds, ringtones, and notification sounds. We'll have an app of the week. We'll probably continue along with Evernote, or we might just showcase one of the alternative note-taking programs, and there are several. And your questions, we hope to get to your questions. Please go ahead and put them in the comments when the show goes live, or when we show the when we put the show up. Uh, click that you're coming and leave any questions there in the comments. That would be great. Anything else? I'm done. You're done? <laughs> Stick okay. a fork in me. All right. It's about <laughs> time. we got to go watch a football game, though, don't we? Oh, yeah. yeah. See you next week, folks, on What Does This Button Do? And like, what does this button do? Just keep pressing those buttons. You'll